Hello, my name is Mitchell Pearson and welcome to another video on Azure Data Factory. In this video, I'm going to share with you not one, but two different activities. The first activity is going to be the lookup activity. What the lookup activity does is it allows you to go get data and return that data and output it into your pipeline. And so a good use case for this would be executing a stored procedure that returns data, right? So for this scenario here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to execute a stored procedure via the lookup activity that's going to go out to a table, return the last essentially execution time of a file, a particular file, and then we're also going to use the get the metadata activity that we used in previous videos if you've been following along to get the last modified date of a file. So I'm going to go look at a file, get the last modified date. I'm going to go to the control table and find out the last date that I processed that file. And if the last modified date is greater than the last time I executed and loaded that file, then we run it again, else we don't run it. And how do we figure out if the dates are different or which one's greater? Well, we would use the if condition activity. And so I'm going to introduce you to two new activities here. That's enough of that. Let's jump right in. This is our Azure Data Factory that we've been essentially working with. And what I want to do is create a new pipeline. Now, I can do that by simply just starting from an existing pipeline that we already have. So for this example here, what I'll do is go over to Metadata Activity, and then I'll copy out this Metadata Activity right here. I'm going to right click in the little ellipsis and clone to copy that activity. All right. So now we have a new activity here. I'll move it later. I'll create a new folder and I'll put it in its own little folder later on. But for now, let's give this guy a better name. So it's opened up a new tab across the top, metadata activity. I am going to, let's see, general. Let's give this a better name. So we'll call this five, we'll go down to the end. And then this is going to be really two different activities that we're going to be reviewing here, right? So look up. I'll put an underscore there and then if condition. All right. Now, uh, the first thing I'll do is this stored procedure I no longer need. So we'll go ahead and delete that guy. The get metadata activity is going to get the last modified date, right? And so we could do something like, you know, give this a better name like get last modified date. There we go. And then we're going to bring in another activity. Now, the other activity we're bringing in here is going to be the lookup activity. Remember, what the lookup activity allows us to do is essentially run a stored procedure or really run a query uh, as well. You can just run an ad hoc query in here. And so I'm going to go ahead and under the settings, well, let's do this. Get, so it's a little bit clearer on what we're trying to accomplish. So this is going to get the last modified date. This is going to get the last execution date. All right, so get the last execution date. Then we go over to settings because we have that little red one that says, hey, there's a setting here that you have to set. This is required. Then I'm going to connect to my database here. So this is going to be my data set. Remember that YouTube channel table. Now I'm not actually going to pull back any data from this is interesting. I'm not actually going to bring back any data from that YouTube channel. Uh, this this example that we're doing here has nothing to do with that YouTube channel at all. But we're actually able to leverage that data set since it is connected to that SQL Server database. And from that database, we're going to run a stored procedure. So it's not going to use that table at all. It's a little bit confusing if you think about it, but I'm just going to run a stored procedure here. Technically, if you're going to run a stored procedure, it would make more sense if you just did like, you know, a linked connection here, just the connection manager, or you had to create a data set specifically for the stored procedure, but you don't have to. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, look, go get the last load date. So I've created a couple stored procedures here, and let's talk a little bit about those real quick, all right? Uh, I'm going to pull over Management Studio and show you some objects that I've created in advance to speed this video up. So your time is important to me. Uh, I've created a control table. Very simple. It has a source and it has an execution date. Now, I have a single row in here. I did not create this with any level of complexity. Obviously, you would you know, filter it down to the source that you're worried about and you would get the maximum out of all of those different ones that have been executed, which one was the least, whatever. So just a basic control table, almost like an incremental load design pattern. And then I'm creating a stored procedure that gets the last load date. Select execution date from control table. Now here's the thing. My control table has one execution date. 
if it had more than one, I would do max. I would, you know, filter it down. I, I could do any list of things here to make this more complicated. Uh, I also have a stored procedure that's going to update the control table at the very end of the process with the most recent date that we have, you know, ran this package, right? Or ran this pipeline. So that are that's essentially the stored procedures that we're running. So what does that mean? It means that for this stored procedure, we don't have any import input import parameters well input parameters this is telling us we could import them so this is it right there's my data set there's my stored procedure this is going to go to that database table it's going to return the last execution date and so first row only totally fine if you return an array uh, you have to handle the data differently right and so we're going to talk more I'm going to talk more about arrays in a different video with the for each loop and you know a couple of other methods here but this is the primary thing this is going to go get that last modified date this is going to go get the last execution date now i'm running it in debug this is something that i'm going to recommend if you're working with data factory you're playing with data factory you're learning it you're exploring it run it in debug look at the input look at the output parameters in that json there let's refresh this guy make sure everything succeeded don't get you know 10 activities in and then run it and find out it's failing and so what I'm going to do is we have get get last execution date. If we click on the X, let's see, let's see. There it is, March 13th, 2020. And that is exactly what I put in my data. Notice that it says first row here. Hmm. First row execution date. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. We're going to be using that very soon. Now, if we go back up here and look at last modified date, we click right here. The last modified date was what eight days later March 21st so the file is newer than the last time I executed that file all right so this is what I'm gonna do I want to use a condition and if condition activity so we're gonna go over here and if condition is not under the general category so we're gonna minimize that category we're going to go down to iteration and controls or conditionals grab the if condition activity drop that guy right there and then I'm gonna connect both of the activities that currently exist to that if condition activity so we'll grab this guy drag him over grab this guy drag him over and then let's click on the if condition so and we could give it a name like you know is file new right that's what we're checking to see and now we have to build an expression this is the part that can be so intimidating when you're working with data factory i love data factory it has come such a phenomenally long way from where it started it is such an intuitive and easy tool but there's a learning curve here right that's why I'm doing these videos so that if you get stuck you're able to open up YouTube watch a little 10 12 minute video and you're like ah, I get it that's how you write that expression that's the goal here to help you out so I am going to let me see what am I doing here um, what was I gonna do next all right well won't worry about it what we're gonna do is build an expression I had something else I want to talk about but that's okay if it was important we'd remember it um, I'm going to go into my add dynamic content just like we've done in the past and I am going to bring in a logical function because what we want to do is we want to check the output of one against the output of the other and see which one is greater. If it is true, do this. If it's false, do this. And so we're going to go in here and we're going to say, oh, look at this, greater or equals to. So let's bring that in. Greaters or equals to. Now, what that does, if we read it right here, it returns true if the first argument is greater than or equal to the second. So that's what we want to do. We're going to do that. Now, the next part here is I'm going to shift enter down to the next line. We're going to grab the last modified date. So we're going to grab that. Remember, just like I've shown you in the past, if you've seen my previous videos, the output is not sufficient enough. We have to reference that exact item within that output, which here is last modified. It's case sensitive. Keep that in mind. But the way that we just got this is by executing the package, Looking at the outputs, we're able to find out exactly what those items are. We separate this with a comma. We go down to the next line. And now we're going to go get the last execution date, which was returned by the lookup activity. So we come back over here, dot, and it was first row, dot. Remember, this was actually ex, uh, uppercase, execution date. Let me see if I have my notes. I want to make sure I get this correct right here Let's see where's my mouse oh i'm zoomed in <laughs> yeah that's what happens when you're live okay first row boom we got it 
All right. The mouse, when you're zoomed in, the mouse just doesn't want to go. All right, that's it. We need a closing parenthesis here. There it is. It's already there, so I don't want to add it again. And so all we're doing is a very simple expression. The hard part is, you know, we're fault, what is the expression? How do you work with a new expression language and how do you reference those output parameters of other activities? That's the hard part here. Once you get that, it gets so easy. Working with arrays is another challenge, but that's why it's going to be its own set of videos. We're going to click finish. I think we're on the right path. We're about done. For if it's true, I'm going to click the little button right here. Notice that what I've done is it's almost like we get a brand new pipeline. If the condition equals true, this is a set of activities that we're going to perform. And so what do I want to do? Well, I like to, before I get complex with this, before I start loading data, modifying things, deleting files, I like to test it out, make sure it's working correctly. So a way that I debug here to keep it very simple is I'm going to bring in a wait activity. All right. And I'm going to rename this wait activity something very intuitive like wait true, meaning that it's true that the modified date is greater than the last execution date. It's true that the file is new. And so if this activity runs, I know that it evaluated to true. Very simple. Settings, what are we going to do under settings? One second, perfect. All right. Now, if it's confusing for you so far, don't worry. It's going to clear up very soon because we're going to add one more activity under false, false activities. We're going to grab the wait activity. I use this once again for debugging. And I am going to, let's set up a little configuration right here under settings. Well, one second is perfect. And then let's go ahead and name this wait underscore false. So if this one runs, it's false. If the other one runs, it's true. Only one's going to get ran, right? Only one condition is going to get met unless we really mess things up. So here we go. We're going to debug it again. It moved on me. We're going to debug it again. Let's see what happens. One activity false, one activity true debug. All right, let's see what happens here. It's going to run pretty quick, pretty quick. And remember, one thing you can do is always come down here and refresh if you think maybe it's done. And it's, Oh, look at that. It's done. Now, what's going on here? Let's see what happens. We ran a get metadata activity and the lookup activity. Now, those are going to run in parallel at the same time. There were no constraints. Once they get done, what runs next? The if condition activity. Now, if we go to the if condition activity, you know, we have a lookup. We have our um, last modified date, the if condition gets ran, and then we have wait true. If you look at the output of the wait true here, it says wait time in seconds. But the fact that wait true is the activity that ran and not wait false means that it recognized that the last modified date was greater than the last execution date. And remember, you can always come in here and look and say, okay, the last modified date was March 21st. Go look at this guy right here. The last execution date was March 13th. What does that mean? Last modified date is new. So our pipeline is running good. It's looking good. It's in good shape. But that's how you write that expression. So in this video, we took a look at the lookup activity. It's just really, it's known for being able to return outputs where the stored procedure might throw you off. Now, I'm going to put a little disclaimer in here, okay? Uh, I have been working with this Gen 2 since it was released. I wrote this series of blogs on my blog back in 2018. These are not new videos that I'm doing. They're new videos, but they're not new demos. So back then, the stored procedure did not return an output and I couldn't figure it out. Maybe there is a way to do that today, but because of habit and using this over some length of time, I now use lookup to do that. And so if some way I'm wrong in that statement, I apologize. That's my disclaimer. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next video if you so choose to continue watching. Enjoy.